Hey, 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 welcome back to the Wheat Field, my wheat. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? This is your girl, La T, your favorite channel messenger here at Tears and Wheat to Row Show, where you sure enough never know what you're going to get. <sighs> tonight, uh, tonight, tonight is the night. Uh, uh, tonight, tonight is the night. Yo. We got a conversation today. We do. We do, y'all. We do. This one right here is a little sensitivo. So hopefully you can hang on in there with your girl. You can rock with your girl. You can vibe with it because we're going to go down through some stuff that's pretty freaking thick. I mean, it's thick. It's like that old school Crisco. So it might be kind of slow. Depending on how far they want to work it out. We're going to get it out the can and into the pan. And the most high going to put the heat on. And then we'll see how it get to cooking. Whether it's going to be a slow summer burn or something that's going to be in a crock pot. If we actually going to drop some, you know, get the frying and have some nuggets drop off dropped off in there you know how it go so if you in forward to see how it come together pull together rock with your girl hang on in there hang on in there and if you vibe subscribe if you end up if it end up being something that you care about share it out you know how it go sharing is caring and if you want to come back on a daily and get this bell go ahead on and hit the bell you know how it do go ahead and give me a thumb print up to you know that little thumbs up guys so i can better pick up on you Today's topic, tonight's topic is uh, one that's kind of been brewing in the spirit. And we feel like it's coming together. It's, it's, it's about time to go ahead and, and, and chop this up. We've been seeing all of these, uh, you know, the air of the day with men. and Well, we'll back up and say this. We prayed. We did. We prayed. We had to pray because we started this video and it was like, oh, Father, I don't even know how we are going to address this, right? We have talked about a little bit of this in our own testimonial. We have a video in the archives, my Kate Samuels theory on relationships. That's just my testimony. You know what I mean? You watch it and see what you think. It's up to you, how, your own opinion. But, uh... The K. Samuels phenomenon is a part of a larger conversation. And so many people grabbed hold to him and his theories because it is such a deeply rooted conversation. And I believe that many of our brothers don't feel heard. They don't feel valued. They have endured a lot uh, for a very long time. And there's a lot of factors, of course, that's in this space that we, we re most of us, re uh, many of us reside, because most of my audience is in the United States. So I have a little bit of audience that's like overseas, India, Africa, England. You know, I see y'all. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Thank you so much for tuning in and being with me as I grow in this phase of... Uh, uh, the channel growth so thank you for being with me as we grow uh, but most of my viewership is from the states and uh, I can see the demographics and the metrics and so I can say that so this right here is not just affecting you know us in the states but also you know I had a conversation with one of my uh, Ghanaian brothers and he was kind of touching on this subject and it kind of revived it rehashed it you know in terms of current late and so i did a facebook reel on the topic and uh it kind of went from there like yeah this is something that we do we 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 should talk about you know so we're gonna do our very best we prayed to get the father in front of us and kind of help us navigate this we have two texts to support us in terms of the conversation so you know i'm not just pulling this out of my own testimonial experiences or what i've just seen and read online etc but to have some more grit behind what we feel is a part of a larger dark psychology in terms of why this phenomenon even exists what phenomenon are you talking about, Lot T, pray tell? Oh, it's this whole, again, that K. Samuels modern relationship, modern woman, modern man type of thought process, train of thought. You see, I'm stuttering. I, I'm trying to, I'm working to look. 
Y'all look. I gotta get a sip. Cause we're gonna have to get into it. We 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 gonna have to jump into it. So my thought on Kay Samuels itself is that the man has some good points, but a lot of it was just way off the You know what I mean? A lot of it was just like that spectacle type of language to get people to tune in to some some left field shit because bros is hurt. Bros are hurt. They really are. Like I mean, and that's not to say that sisters is not hurt. Cause trust me, sis, I'm not leaving us out at all. We all going through it, and it's because of the dark psychology and the remnants of this. We, I believe, as a people, have not fully digested what this did to us as a people. Have not. Have not. And we talk about what it did to our men. Huh. Because we, where were you at? Come on with it. Come on with it, y'all. It's right here. We talking about what it did to our men what it did to us as women, what it did to our mindset, how we look at each other in terms of security, um, the abil ability to provide respect, the ability to maintain family uh, units and community. Um, it's deep, it's so deep and we do, I believe we have not Again, we've been talking on this solar plexus chakra and generational passing down of trauma. Not only do we teach it, but we birth it. Like that trauma is in our cells. Like the DNA information is held within. We have Akashic records and everything that we learn and we experience goes into the library. And we teach certain things, we birth it. It comes out through our lineage. And we have not only suffered at the hands of this type of trauma, coupled, right, supported with this type of treachery and psychological damage, right, that is in us, but we also have suffered a, for years a systemic, systemic, uh, internal operations of just uh, warfare, warfare against our communities. And, and we talk about warfare uh, in every level, like from this that took place to emancipation and being just like let free with no resources, back into sharecropping, into the Jim Crow era, into uh, you talking about uh, supreme segregation, and 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 terror that was committed against our. Uh, I mean, how many? And, and we talking about governmental terror and like uh, coups. We we were reading in. Uh, do we have Wilmington right now? Yep, it's right here. The Wilmington insurrection. How? I mean, this is another great one that talks about how the government, the Democrats, the secret nine, and the rise of white supremacy. This right here book. Huh. It talks about how the Navy was involved in the in the coup that took place here, and just and this is just 1898. We are not even away from truly, true like well defined. I don't know what other word to use, but warfare, systemic government supported warfare against a whole people and it's a reason why we are targeted when we look at uh, other factors but when we want to get to the root of why men and women black men black women cannot or have struggle issues real issues with being a family with holding communities, with healing. That dark psychology is major, y'all. It's major. It's not something for us to brush over and just put the blame on one side or the other. We, it, it, I believe that we would benefit and Father recommends that we start peeling back the layers, the layers 
that are upon us like what happened to our people in this in this land and how those remnants are still with us Mr. Samuels would speak to a lot of women who wanted to have a particular lifestyle. You know that my my mate earns a significant amount of money so that I can be a stay-at-home mom and take care of the kids and you know these women were being rated on their physical attributes and what they brought to the table in terms of being qualified to have this type of mate. And Mr. Samuels would so eloquently remind them of their market value as uh, presumably defined by him, uh, what their market value was and what they were worth and what they should be able to have in a mate based on either their physicality, whether or not they had children, their level of education, their profession, you know, all of those things. And then proceed to let them know that men don't value your education. That's not what they want. Are you willing to cook meals every day? Are you willing to pick up after this person? Are you willing to do certain activities that would, you know, and then are you willing to accept certain behaviors so that you could live this lifestyle? But, sis, I'm trying to figure out, like, where do we get that modeling from? Where do we get the modeling that, you know, women are to be put on a pedestal, in a sense? And, because I think that you are supposed to be held in high honor. I do. I think that you should hold, be held in high honor as well as your mate should be held in high honor. It's a mutual respect thing. That's just my position. That's just my thought process. If anybody has watched my show long enough, you will see when I talk about relationships, I talk about being equally yoked. I think that we should come together in purpose, purpose unto the most high God because heaven has come to earth, earth to reside in earth and on earth to do a work, a work that we don't remember. And that work requires the both of us. It requires you to have your energetic match, the person that is aligned to you to ensure that your purpose is fulfilled and that you will come together in purpose. Submit, boom, onto the purpose. I have the position that as a woman, I am not obligated to submit onto any man. I am obligated to submit unto the Most High God. And my purpose is aligned to my mate. And if both of my mate and I are submitted unto the Most High God, then we will honor each other in that right. There is no need for me to say, oh, I'm submitting to my husband. No, I submit to our purpose. And I respect my husband with the most, with the utmost respect just like I respect the most high and the same onto me. I expect the same. That's not what really Mr. Samuels was teaching. I, I, I never heard him speak about purpose or, or the husband having to maintain a certain level of respect for the wife. If, if, if I mean, I had an opportunity to catch a full show on or two just so I could be aware outside of you know the sound clips and bites that they would put that he called somebody told her she was gonna die along with cats you know what I mean like stuff like that the ones that they would get you to get the clickbait but no actually sit on the session and, and see what the man was really talking about and not once did I hear him talk about the couple coming together in purpose and having a mutual level of respect onto each other for worth and value because you are serving the same purpose onto the Most High God. That was something that I never heard. 
But I did hear a lot about, you know, people wanting to have this lifestyle that really was never afforded to black women in the first place. Just really wasn't. Not in the States. Where did that come from? Because ever since these days right here, huh, a black couple bears the same burdens that any other couple bears, finding gainful employment to support themselves, establishing a strong base from which to raise healthy children, carving out time to escape life's daily hassles and rekindle tender bonds of affection. Time to simply do life in the best way possible. However, they have some additional baggage given to them by family long gone, old, dirty, and heavy baggage that needs to be repaired and or discarded. It's a whole lot that we need to unlearn, basically, and relearn. Nowadays, it seems as though black couples are fighting to stay afloat. Like Salmon, we fight and battle against incredible odds to survive and to grow. Regardless of whom we choose as mates to accompany us on our journey, anyone black will be swimming in upstream battle. We will be swimming upstream. Why is that? Is it because after emancipation, our black men and, and black sisters were not given the opportunity to have gainful employment? I want to know when was it ever a time in the history of us being in the States where black men were able to earn a sufficient living that allowed the wife to stay home and care for children? Yeah, that's just a pause to, so that we can think about that. Because each partner has always had to work. That was the norm. It was no, I'm like my other, you know, Caucasian sisters where they could stay home and my husband is off making money. No, that wasn't the case. You, my brother, was out, my hubby was out in somebody's sharecropping field doing whatever or in the coal mines or on the railroad working and I was on my knees or in somebody's kitchen being a maid or a chef or a nanny. When we were to have the ability to send children to school, most women sent their children to school to be a nurse, the girls. And the boys usually started working early. So boys were tended to go towards more service and labor where women were placed in medicine. Now, it's not like a, we didn't have an opportunity to get education in some points if you had the money and ability to do so. But most of the population were not in that boat. And even when we could get situated like our towns again, Wilmington, where we could see, uh, where was it, Oklahoma, you know, places where you have prominent, dominant black societies where it was affluent and we could make money and business. Yes, because those things were popping off too. There was other systemic warfare, government supported, that trashed our economy. So even when our brothers were able to not only get education and have in schooling and, and, you know, become businessmen and entrepreneurs and innovators, because we can look at the country and see that how many inventions around this piece come off of black people, off of black men, black women, our market share should be very different. But we know that it's not because of warfare, internal warfare within the states. Civil war never ended. And I would say that it, it continues. It rages on. And you get to a point where you are so downtrodden and unable to fight a war openly. Not advocating for anybody to go do nothing or nothing. This is a battle in the mind at this point, right? But it's still a battle nonetheless. And if you get to a point where you feel like you cannot win this battle, what happens? What happens? 
when every time you build up, somebody come and stump it out. Like, no matter what direction you go in, you still labeled a boy. You go from uh, not even being able to look a person in the face, you just looking at somebody in their face is a crime. You didn't move over enough feet on the sidewalk, that's a crime. I tell you I don't want to be your maid and that's a crime. Like, that's real shit. We say it like it was a long time ago, but it wasn't. Uh, what happened in Wilmington is 1898. Yeah, it's 2023. That sounds like it's forever ago. But black women just got the right to vote in this country in 1964. That's not even 100 years ago. That's literally 60 years ago. We talking about something very real. When you look at the crack epidemic and we know that the CIA was pumping drugs all throughout this country in targeted communities. Why? So the war on drugs was not a war on drugs. It was a war on black and brown people. On our families. On, on the mothers. On the fathers. Snatching parents out of the household. You add all of these things up, and what it is, is a system that is planning for you to fail. It is a system that is planning and designing your demise. 48 Laws of Power. Keys to Power. Those, this is law number 10. We, we, we talked about this one in the archives too, but we just going to touch back on it. Those misfortunes among us, those misfortunates among us who have been brought down by circumstances beyond their control deserve to have all the help and sympathy we can give them. But there are others who are not born to misfortune or unhappiness, but draw it upon themselves by their destructive actions and unsettling effect on others. It would be a great thing if we could raise them up, change their patterns, but more often than not, it is their patterns and, that end up getting inside and changing us. The reason is simple. Humans are extremely susceptible to the moods, emotions, and even the ways of thinking of those who they spend their time. I'll say that again. The reason is simple. Humans are extremely susceptible to the moods, emotions, and even the ways of thinking of those with whom they spend their time. In other words, you spend your time around miserable, unhappy people long enough, you end up becoming more like them than not. So if we spend our time in a society of people that hate us, would rather see your demise. And I'm not saying this to everybody because we know that this is not the majority in this day. A lot of stuff has changed, but there's a lot of stuff that has not changed. We still deal with police brutality. We still deal with um, judicial discrimination. We know that there are two sets of laws in this land. It is for those who got money and those who don't. And even if you black with money to her, you still, it's a, it's a look. Okay, so we know that we still live in an environment with those who have set the system up because they despised us. Because they would rather see our towns and communities drowned out. Like all of this stuff is common nature. I mean common knowledge, not common nature. I don't believe that. I mean the most high did what it did for his reasons and I can't talk to none of that because you know what we have to persevere and we have to rise above right just like that book says you can lend out a hand and try to help a person raise themselves up but they have to be willing to do the work they have to be willing to change their mindset and that is where we are in this day it is all about the mindset 
But back to what I'm saying, just to back up, because I don't want to get squirrel on that point, is it's layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. In the Civil War, uh, that emancipation was supposed to end, it's not ended. It, it, it's not done. It, 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 it was, it, it was a, a strategy. It was a distraction. It was a spectacle. Something to make you feel like you were free all the while you were not. It is the same thing as while you're in a 15 by 15, by the time they take you out the 15 by 15, they built a 100 by 100. And we just haven't journeyed out far enough to see that the construct is still there, that you are still locked in a, a prison of your mind. Not only of the mind, but a systemic prison where all the rules are put in place to keep you in a certain place. And we see that from, again, whether it is people go to the armed forces so that they can get a leg up, they can get education, and they can, they, they can earn a capacity for their family. And because out of the fact that they love this country and they want to fight for freedom, the same way people fought in the Civil War for their own freedom. That still continues, but you go to the armed services and you get treated like a boy still being disrespected, unable to have your manhood. And then you come home, and this is happening to plenty of people, and I'm not saying it's not like my other uh, white chocolate brothers don't go through the same thing, because they do. Because at this point, it's not a, it, it really is about poor and, and not poor. But do we get it worse? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's still the same game today. It's a whole caste system. Caste system and classism is what we're dealing with. But for some reason, uh, we have, a, have forgotten the track. We, in this day and age, sit up here like uh, bros looking at women like we just want to sit up and pop bonbons. And, and, I'm, and women trying to, like, when the fuck were we ever able to do that? And if you can make the money and give it and go in relationship with other women and, and give them that type of lifestyle, why would you not treat us the same way? But it's a psychology to that too. Why are black women rated lower than any other woman on the country? Would it have to do with anything with this? But we don't, we don't put the pieces together no more. We feel like that's ancient history, and it no longer affects us. Oh, no, beloved. This right here is very real. And it's the reason why we don't value each other. It is the reason why I don't feel like my, not personally, but just to put it out there, why it's a sentiment that black men can't protect black women, that you, that you can't provide for us that I must provide for self. I must protect myself. So we want to know why do women have a masculine disposition? For one, we've been working right alongside you the whole time, bruh. Like seriously, from the fields to the houses to emancipation, both on our knees, both trying to build, both trying to get it the whole time. It ain't never been a time where women never had the opportunity, we never had the opportunity, not in the States, to just sit there and get that luxury. No, it ain't. It has never been afforded to us. It's never been afforded to you, bro, to, to provide that. Not unless you're in a special industry like sports. You play, you, play, you playing ball? And even, I mean, like, because then we had that running joke, and you get on, and you, he leave your ass for what? Kanye wasn't bullshitting. I mean, that line came from somewhere. Stick by his side. Yeah, I know it's other guys that's balling, but that's all right. So... Us having a whole issue and why we can't come together in relationship is not nothing new. And the pressures that we are under as a people in this society affect our ability to maintain communication, 
it was a good uh uh interview it was james baldwin and who was he speaking with i can't remember her name but um she was saying why do i get the worst of you 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 go to work all day with the with the white man and you 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 chucking and jiving in his face and smiling and then you come home and I catch him. It talks about it in his book, P Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome on the violence in the home. Because when our men feel so disrespected outside and you come home and it's tough. Where do you take that frustration out at? The closest people to you catch all the hell. And then, because it's not easy at home, you have the opportunity to run off and go mess around with so-and-so. But you've been seeing that. You've been seeing men have multiple women and multiple uh, concubines and, and not just concubines. I mean, you know what I'm saying. I'm using that's old language, but you know what I'm saying. Like he, the uh, master from the big house, got wifey sitting up there looking pretty, but he still sleep uh, creeping off into the slave quarters. Got babies everywhere. And home girl, what is she doing while she's sitting up in the big house looking pretty, knowing that her husband is out there doing whatever, but she ain't going to leave? No, because he providing everything. What does she do? She get pissed off and take that shit out on everybody else that's servicing her. And we wonder where the caring attitude come from. Uh, really? Is it not these still these same women that feel like they privileged and they could just fucking pop off on anybody and everybody? It's the same thing. Ain't nothing changed. We are still under the same civil warfare that has been since I don't know how long. People complain that they can't find work, they can't find jobs, they can't, I mean, like what? That same pressure. So you wonder why women tired? Yeah, we fucking tired too. They looking at that same goddamn sentiment like, oh, I want to sit up and be pretty too and just raise my babies and take a load off. But we ain't never had that. So who, 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 whose plight is more? That's the conversation now. Oh, well, we going through this. Oh, well, we going through that. Well, shit, we both been going through it for a very long time. When are we ever just going to say that, yeah, we both going through some shit, and how do we work together to solve it? When do we get to that point to say, okay, yeah, bro, I understand you. I do. I understand what it's like to go out as a man, to have your manhood stripped away from you every fucking day, or you got to stuff it down, or you got to, you know, or if you, if you actually act like a man and, 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 you know, show some passion or anything other than timidness, then you looked at as a threat and they will automatically put your ass down just because of your size or your posture, your demeanor, your tone of voice. Since when we don't understand that shit, we teach it to our sons, do we not? When you get pulled over by the police, put your hands this way and you speak this way and this is how you look because we've been taught that shit for hundreds of years. But I'm also sick of being your fucking punching bag because you get treated like that shit. We get treated like shit every goddamn day too. Come on now. It's just to the point where I can wear my natural fucking hair to work without being not getting a goddamn job. Like, we still putting in laws like a fair hair law act, like no discrimination against my hair shit. It's 2023. You think this shit is over? No, it's not over. We all go through it. We all fight the same battles every day, but you looking at my battle like it's different. Like, I'm looking at your battle like it's different. No, it's not. It's the same shit. So when this brother hit me up from Ghana talking about some, why do women not appreciate or respect me? And I'm like, bruh, we do. Men who uphold their honor to be respected because I'm not your punching bag, bruh. I'm not. Just like you ain't my come up, you ain't my bag. I'm not your punching bag. 
It's the same thing. You don't want to be disrespected just like I don't want to be disrespected. Y'all, we see uh, conversations. What is this? Uh, tonight's talk or on tonight's show or some shit like that. These couples sit around a, on a panel and talk about issues in black relationships. And the guy is sitting up here saying uh, all the logic about why he should be respected. Like the whole thing. I go out to work and I, uh, you are the woman and you are beneath me and, and this doesn't, you know, and that. But the whole same logic that he's using, a white man could turn around and use that against him. It's like, do you not understand that the same reason why you are putting your this woman is supposed to be in a submissive place onto you is the same logical reasons that we could say that you are to be submissive to the white man. But you don't want to hear that. How can you tell me that my education don't matter? That's Sasha kicking the light. How can you tell me that, you know, I'm only subjugated to a certain position in life? which is to serve you. What? But a lot of this shit is just to me twisted and distorted. It goes all the way back to this right here, in my opinion. Because people don't read. They don't. They don't. They look at it and be like, oh, where well, God made Eve from a rib. Really, did he? Because I'm, Sasha, goodness, she about to push my stuff down. Uh, Genesis 1 and 27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. That's Genesis 1 and 27. He said, And God blessed them. And God said to them, them, plural, to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So if God in Genesis 1 and 27 says he made man in his image, male and female, and gave them both a charge, how did God make Eve from Adam's rib. What? Where did this come from? And I'm not shitting on nobody's nothing. Because I cut my teeth on this. Okay? Uh, these principles, yeah. It's some validity in this stuff. But some stuff you just got to really think about. Where did that come from? Who translated it? Question. Who translated it? Something to think about. Why is Eve's story not in the Bible? We talk about the missing books all the time. Missing books. Why is Eve's story not in there? Why is Mary's story not in there? Mary was the one that was blessed to carry the messenger. Why is her lineage not in there? If she is the one that had the messenger, she birthed him unknown by a man, meaning she had not had sex. It is a miraculous birth. She was given a child by the Lord, a seed where she had not known a man. Why is Mary's lineage not in the Bible? We talk about Joseph's, but what the fuck does Joseph have to do with any fucking thing when it wasn't his seed? pray tell, but you don't hear shit about where Mary came from. Not in that book, you don't. And I done read it a couple of times. Her story is not in there. Mary Magdalene, her story is not in there. Where did Mary go after the messenger left? Why was there an issue with Peter and Paul? Why did, why, why did they have this big ass fallout on how the gospel was supposed to be carried forward? And Mary's story is nowhere to be found. 
Did they have an issue with the fact that the messenger would give her knowledge that he didn't give to the other disciples? That right there is described in the Gnostic Gospels. Let's get a sip. That episode is down in the archives. It's called Stolen Gospels. There's a reason, a dark psychology, as to why our texts were put together the way that they were. It is a reason, not just for onto our people, because these, a lot of, and we're talking about the civil wars in the states, but we can go back to religious wars across time. The people who came to the states were escaping from religious persecution, from religious rule. They had a thumb over them. Most of the Constitution has talked about crimes against King George. Do we read our doctrines? Yeah, it might feel like it's a whole bunch of ingredients, but a lot of this stuff is the reasons why we are the way that we are. One, modeling after people that we are around, and we have no idea truly of where this stuff come from. Are we taking the time to learn it, to find out, to study your history? I had a friend, uh, one uh, another content creator, Soul of a Man 504, is a great guy, Damon Alvarez. He, I, I posted something about our, our home country. I'm pushing her out the way because she's about to push my tripod down. She can feel the spirit, like she going nuts up underneath here. Uh, we were, he, I posted some little known facts, like, because I, I like to do that, to go back down our lineage and look at where we come from and what was actually happening. Because so much of our heritage is lost. We have no idea. That was one of the treacherous things that they did was to separate us. Not only when we come over did they separate us, families broken apart, sold off to different plantations so you had no family connection. That was severed. Then the, as the elders died off, our, our customs and traditions died off. Our language died off. And not just a language, but many languages died off. It is a reason why they don't want you to know who you are. And everything that is being fed back to you is fed back in a way so that they can do this. Exercise power. And exercising this power didn't just start with the transatlantic slave trade. It did not. We talking about wars that had happened on our country, homeland continent and in the continent of Africa for a very long time. I mean going back from when it was ancient Kemet when the upper and lower cataracts had issues with trade going across the Nile. There was trade. There was issues with that, with others coming in and entering and coming into not only just the country for trade, but into establishments and politics and, and, and bringing that influence in. There was also uh, the Persian Wars. We're talking about the migration of the Hyksos. We are talking about all, I mean, like stuff that to us in this day just seems so irrelevant. But to understand how we got to where we're at, we must look back. And in looking back, I made that post and Mr. Alvarez commented like, you know, we are doomed. Yes, we're doomed to repeat history. I said, yes, because we don't know it. You are doomed to repeat history if you don't know it. This is why we study. This is why study is so important. So that we can know why we have the issues of the day. Because what was natural to us has been stripped away. And we are conformed. The reason is simple. 
humans are extremely susceptible to the moods, emotions, and even the ways of thinking of those whom they spend their time. How have we been spending our time? Where have we been spending our time? What are we looking at? What are we listening to on a daily basis, in and out, is nothing but lustfulness, confusion, over-sexualization, drug abuse and drug use, alcoholism, womanizing. It's all everything to the bad. And we wonder why we can't have relationships, why we can't get families off the ground, why we can't sustain communities. It's never an issue of me valuing myself over my husband. That's not the case. It is all the issues in between what I experience on a daily basis as being a black woman in a corporate environment, having to temper myself. I cannot speak the way that my counterparts speak. I cannot. Even if I wanted to, it wouldn't come out because I have been trained to restrain myself. And you mean to tell me that that doesn't hit you in a certain kind of way where I could see a certain so-and-so with a skirt three, four, two, three, four inches right below their split? Going to lunch with all the feathers, laughing and kikiing and falling all over the desk. Oh, this happens in a day. I'm telling you something very for real. Okay? I could never. I would be called into the office so quick, would hit with the, uh, uh, you gotta, cause somebody complaining. Yeah. On a daily. And that's not to say it don't happen to others, but I would tell you, I would, uh, I would bet that it happens to more, more often. Come on now. Bruh, you going through the same thing. You can't make the same crude and crash jokes. You can't do the same thing. And you mean to tell me that that don't bother you on a daily basis? Yeah, it do. The disrespect bothers you. Because you still dealing with it the same way we still dealing with it. And then you come home and you take that out on us. Or when you get home, we take it out on you. Either way, we taking it out on each other. It ain't the love. It ain't the support. It ain't the upliftment so that you can get back out there, so that I can get back out there, so that we can build some shit and then have enough goodness to filter down to our children and show them so that they know how to model, they know how to act. And that's if both of us is still around because you ain't done took off to go find something easier where you don't have that same level of accountability that I'm trying to put on you because I need you to step up. So you run off and go do whatever so that you can feel better, so that you can get that release. So now is what I'm supposed to accept that you are managing multiple households. No, you don't, you don't even make enough bread to do that. Somebody is going to suffer. So when you run off to go do another household because you don't want to stick and stay with the one that you in, then what am I supposed to do with these babies? And then now the issue is, oh, she's got welfare. The system is making you put men out. Yeah, that's very well true. That's a factor. But we also don't think about the fact that black women are not the biggest recipients of welfare. We're not. And welfare wasn't designed for black women. It wasn't. And it was designed for those women. Why? Because their men were doing the same fuck thing, running off with the mistress. And she didn't know how to manage a bank account. And she didn't have no money to pay no bills because she didn't ever have no fuck job. So now she's stuck with babies that she can't take care of. It's the same, I mean, like, who are we modeling? What are we doing? But what do we have to model? It's not the fairy tale shit that we see on TV. It ain't the Huxtables, that's for damn sure. So who's greater? The fertilizer or the egg? 
Can't either one of us make a baby without it unless you marry. And we see how that shit go. They didn't even tell her fuck story. Because if, if I can make a, a, a baby without your seed, then I think we should know how the fuck that shit works. I, 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 I'm going to need to know who Anna was. Mary's mother. Yeah, I'm going to need to know a little bit about them. Because it's not in here. It's not. They don't, they don't talk about Anna. They don't talk about the grandmother or her mother or her father or what that relationship looked like. They don't. What do they talk about? They talk about Adam and Eve. And they want to beat in the fact that Eve fucked up and she done brought some shit, listened to some outside shit and brought some fucked up shit over to Adam and then he listened to her. And this is the reason why men don't listen to women because women don't know shit, which is some bullshit. That is not the, you know, that is a whole, what do you call it, metaphor. And it has to be a metaphor because Genesis 1 and 27 said God made man and made them male and female in his own image. Not the fact that I came from some fuck rib. How about the fact that that maybe have just been an example of marriages? Like we supposed to come together in union. And it's like a heart space, spirit space, uh, heart chakra type shit connection. That's what I get. You can take it for what you want. I'm just saying. Let's get some cards. We got some light activation and we got some chakra. Which one you want first? This one, Father. Let's get some chakra. See what's going on. We had hourly and almost. You know how I go. We be talking, chopping it up. This is a heavy conversation, though, because that dude's Kevin Samuels. I mean, like, he literally ruined my marriage. Like, seriously. My husband was on that shit. Now, here, now, check this. Me and him both make a coin. Same coin. I mean, he make, got a little bit more earnings, multiple streams of income, because he's a retired veteran with disability. So he get his retirement, his disability, and we work in the same profession, making about the same coin. So now he's making more, but shit is not like I'm not leaving up out this piece doing the same eight hours that you doing. Yeah, I got more education. So, but we come together, shit, we, we doing upper, lower, low end, upper income in California. I mean, we, we live in a pretty much a, ba a baby mansion. I mean, our household, our house sold for $700,000. But you tell me that the work that I put in and what I do on a daily basis means shit. And you like, I mean, you, I, I, I just got to submit to everything fuck say, that you say? No. And if I don't agree, that means that you get to put me through the flow because you got a problem with, you know, uh, what? Because I don't agree with you? Come on, bruh. That's not it. We doing everything, especially when I'm coming in with uh, half, and my coin is, is so that we can do what? And you want to say who? No, it don't work like that. You didn't afford this shit by yourself. You didn't get it by yourself. You don't make all the motherfucking decisions by yourself. That's just not how it roll. It just don't. But we wasn't matched up right anyway because it wasn't no purpose and none of that. I put all my shit into his purpose and walked away with nothing. Nothing. From somebody that would likely have plotted to kill me instead of divorce me. Yeah. Get that. It's bananas out here. And, that, and he was listening to that dude. I didn't follow my fucking instinct on that. I didn't. I didn't. No, baby. I did not follow my instinct on that. Spirit was like, I felt death. I thought, but I, here it is. Here's the fucked up shit. Here, I'm a channel messenger, and I felt death, and I thought that he was going to die on me. Like, I literally felt like my husband was going to die. Like, I thought he was going to have a heart attack or some shit because he would be so stressed out. But he was miserable. His uh fucking ex-wife uh, had did some bullshit, too. Yeah. I do have some guilt over that. You know, over what I thought we were going to create. You know what I mean? But 
when you have see hurt people hurt people hurt people it's very hard to discern where the hurt is coming from what the root of it is and that's how we are right now as couples as as black people it's very hard to discern where the hurt comes from because we just keep a cycle of hurt and pain and everybody is inflicting each other with the same hurt I had to break the cycle and get the fuck on. I was like, fuck all this shit. I don't give two shits because none of it is worth my peace of mind. I got to go. And that's what that was. Out. You can keep all this shit. I wouldn't give two fucks. So, with that being said, I can look back and see that, damn, the same shit she wrote in her motherfucking shit is the same shit that I went through. She must have been right. Hear stories about what the ex or ex ex y because I'm wife number three. It's an issue with that shit. Oh, my instinct was saying, oh no, it's some way wrong with this. It ain't all of what he's saying. Are you li are you able to see what the real is? Yeah, I should have did some more prayer. Prayer was in reverse. That shit right there. Yeah. I don't know, y'all. This right here, just like. It's, it's, it's heavy to my heart because all of us have a testimony over some messed up stuff. Like, all of us, I done been through every situation you could freaking count. From, uh, deadbeat baby daddy to abusive ex-husband to, you know, no ambition, uh, to, we done did the no ambition twice. Like, you know, and then brothers who get mad and jealous at you because you hustling harder. Well, bro, I got to hustle. I got babies. I can't just sit around here and do nothing. If I did sit around here and do nothing, then I'd be fucked up because I'm on welfare. So can you win for that? Can you win for losing? And then bro sitting over there like it don't matter how hard I hustle, I ain't going to get nowhere no way. So what is the fucking point? And then get mad at the chick that's trying to push you and cheerlead you on to do more and do more. And you're like, oh, you just pushing me too hard. It's too much pressure. It's too much pressure. It's too much pressure. Like, come on now. When, how can we ever get it together? If you feel like you can never win and I feel like, you know, I can't ever trust you or depend on you, then we always going to stay at an impasse. It's always going to be an impasse. You want anything out of here? No. Do you want any cards? No. We got growth, though, here, and we got rejection. Growth, rejection, we got faith, and we got perception as well. We got perception. I feel rejection for real strong, though. You know, rejection, because we are all rejecting each other. You know... Sis isn't rejecting, bro. Like, come on now with the nonsense, with the bullshit. You know, I'm not doing no fake ass submission shit, you know, just so you could feel like a big man. I'm not doing that, you know. And I'm not going to allow you to reject and devalue me, to diminish my value. Not going to do that. I require to be treated like a whole and equal person. And bros feel rejected like my requirement to be respected as an equal person means that it pushes away or rejects you or your manhood. And equal, I don't know where they get this fucking definition either to equal means same. No, it doesn't. It means equal. I can have a fucking pound of feathers just the same way I can have a pound of rocks. The feathers and the rocks are not the same, but it's still a pound for pound. Come on now. I mean, I'm a whole entity, a whole unit, a whole person, and I require to be respected and valued as a whole person. And I don't think that that means I'm disrespecting you by requiring that. I can respect you, my brother, as a whole unit, a whole man, a whole person for all of your contributions. Everything that you do, I can respect that wholeheartedly. But that doesn't mean that you don't respect me as a whole person. I, again, now, whether or not you want to slice it, because it's a, it's a whole bunch of camps out here that think that the miraculous birth is a bunch of BS, like a woman can't get pregnant without having a seed. So that must have been a metaphor. 
or just trickery you know what i mean so it's all about which you dial into and my opinion is i don't judge however you believe is how you believe to each their own but if you believe this story of how mary and joseph and the messenger came about then you must understand that it's a whole bunch of shit missing because her story, the one who carried the promise, that carried the messenger, her lineage is not in there. Her story is not told. It's a reason why a woman's voice has been silenced for eons. And that wasn't just to silence a particular woman's voice. Maybe it was to silence all women's voice and, her, and, and hurdle the power into one area. And maybe that is why we are still fighting against the patriarchy now. So it didn't just start with us, but who are we modeling after? Are you trying to be the big man that sits up in the big house and get the boss around people because you want to be the boss and you got your little crew working for you? And you got your woman here, and you could go creep off and do what you want to do on the side? Who you modeling? We need to grow past that. And the only way to grow is to reject the bullshit. The bullshit that's been put on us. This fake-ass fucking perspective. Perception. What are we modeling? Can we get back to some realness? Honestly, where is the faith? Do we even know what to put our faith on these days? But I do have gratitude for one thing. I have gratitude for going through my experiences. I do. Because it has taught me a lot. It opened up my eyes. I mean, those types of experiences cracked me all the way open. I mean, all the way, all the way open. Because we definitely here at an impasse. We are. And it's a lot of people that's experiencing impatience. Trying to figure out how do you call in a soulmate when there's so much motherfucking confusion out here. How do you do that? How do you get a soulmate when there's so much confusion out here? You wanted another one. Father say it's a renewal, but the renewal is only going to come after the enlightenment. After we get some enlightenment, enlightenment on what? On this bullshit right here. That is more at play, more at work than what we recognize on a daily basis. It is more going on, way the fuck more. And this shit has been going on for hundreds of thousands of fucking years. Hundreds of thousands. And again, how do we pull in a soulmate when everybody is so fucking impatient and at an impasse? We can't get to no renewal until we put a fucking death to some bullshit. And it is going to be bittersweet for a whole bunch of people. It is. Because folks going to talk about, you know, like, oh, uh, what you mean is this? or what? I don't know how many motherfucking subscribers I'm going to lose off of this shit. Seems like every time I say something controversial, you know, my numbers change. I'm not going to say no numbers because I have a tendency to call shit out. I'm just saying. Folks is grieving. Grief. Insecurity. Manipulation. Mysticism. Manipulation. Vanity. Vanity. All this shit is lustful as a fuck. Everybody chasing the wrong shit. Ain't none of it face based. None of it is faith based. It ain't no purpose to it. Nothing that's going to drive you to your destiny. If we don't flip our perception and reject the bullshit and get to a state of forgiveness right here, we're going to stay right here in this victim mindset, working our motherfucking asses off to, to, to grow and expand. We got to come to balance, 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 and release the bullshit and see that each one of us has worth, self-worth. Anything else, Father? No, you said no. We just rolling, huh? <laughs> I know. Release the bullshit. 
and come to balance. Release the bullshit. Again, we modeling shit that don't even fucking belong to us in the first place. We don't know what belongs to us because we not connected. We not connected to what belongs to us. So we don't know how we are even, even supposed to operate around this bitch. And those books don't tell us the whole story. They don't tell us the whole story because they started hoarding power a very fucking long time ago. Not just being in these motherfucking United States of America. No, it did not start here. Again, when you look at those motherfucking pilgrims and shit and those explorers, what were they running from? What were they doing? What was the purpose? What were they expanding? Because we have not even talked about the Spanish Inquisition or the Crusades. We, not, we haven't even got into that shit. But people don't talk about it. They just want to think that this modern shit just somehow popped up like it just evolved out of thin air. No, the fuck it did not. That's what used to piss me off about old dude. Like, you not even talking real shit, bruh. Because that shit has never even been our condition. Black women just want to sit around and kick our feet up and eat bonbons since fuck when? Pray tell. Can we wake up? Seriously. Let's activate some stuff, Father. Let's activate. Let's activate. You want this? Evolutionary downloads. Recalling power. Future thinking. Recall power. Recalling power. Now, I'll tell you this. Great lessons is right here, too. Spirit guides. Confirmation. Great lesson. Base chakra. Yeah, get rooted. Get rooted. Throat chakra, authenticity, self-expression. People have a hard time expressing themselves. And right now, the expressions are, are so angry and so charged. I mean, I might even sound fired up. I am. My grease is cooking. because, But it's cooking for both sides. I understand my bras just like I understand my sis. You know, I don't walk in the, in the shoes of the sis. Like, I mean, I am her. You know, that work your ass off and pick yourself up through every situation and keep on going. That person having the ability to keep going but I understand what it feels like to feel that feeling of you can't trust anybody you can't depend on anybody no security having to lean into my masculinity in order to subdue the tears in my life and dominate my world because every other partner that has come into it has fallen short. We all fall short of the glory. But when you talk about you find somebody that you can work with and you think you can partner with, and then they put you in a submissive standpoint where, like, everything that you've done is to be, is like, is, there's no value. And, have, and hear them tell you that. And then treat you with such disrespect, again, that abuse and violence. Because he's going out into a world where they treat him with that motherfucking passive-aggressive ass violence. You getting it thrown at you every day. And then when I don't just roll over and comply to your every women request, you can down you you can beat me down because I'm the weaker species in your eyes. I'm the one to be dominated in your world, me and your children. Throat chakra, authenticity, self-expression. Our brother's throats have been closed. They can't readily self-express. They can't put, you know, their demands out there in the marketplace. You have this much market share. How can you hold power? You don't hold any power. You don't have a market share. He was talking about in the market, in the market, what you value that in the market. Bruh, how, what are you valued at in the market for real? Do you have a market share? Because black people are what? Like maybe 15, 16% of the goddamn population. How much market share do you really have, bruh? Let's talk about it. 
And then you get mad because you come home and you feel the same way in your household. And you take it out on, on the people that's at home closest to you. Not saying that every brother do because not every brother does that. My Ghanaian brother that I was talking to, he was like, well, over here, I was taught to do these things since 16. Like to take responsibility. To be a provider, to provide security and provision. But when I come home, I don't get that respect from my wife. I can understand his point. Because we all have our jobs and our roles to play. Brother, if you out there, and I've said this in plenty of episodes, if you are out there and you 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 doing your thing, you doing what you need to do as a hubby, and and you taking care of the family, and wifey is at home with the kids, then yeah, you should come home to a a, a cooked meal. You should be able to take a lunch. You should, I mean, shit. Kids should be good. It's a whole job to be at home, but just because you're at home don't mean she ain't doing no job, and that is not to be disrespected. It's respect on both ends. That is the problem, that folks just don't have no respect for each other. Answer the call, Father said. It's time to shine. We being called to a higher day. Start being guides. People who are here to light the way and say it's time out for the nonsense. It's time up out for us arguing over stuff that don't even make no sense. Whose is better or greater, the sperm or the egg? Really, because can't neither one of us make a fucking baby without the other one? And we not raising solid households with single parent households. I can't raise no boy to be a man. And if you not there as a father to help me raise your daughter, then she's going to be missing some shit. She's going to be lacking some shit. The same way that if a mother is not in a household, that son is going to be lacking some shit. Oftentimes, little boys, the first person that abuse them is the mother. The first harshness they get from a woman is from their mother. Take that into our chakras and think about it. Because we're trying to make them into a man because a father ain't home. And we don't have no idea how to change this little boy into a man. Abundance downloads. Regeneration. It's time for us to change some shit. Regeneration to regenerate. Get some illumination, solar plexus chakra, I feel, to digest some stuff so we can regenerate and change this whole freaking cycle. How many times have I heard aunts and uncle, I mean aunts and, and, and cousins and stuff say to their sons, because I don't have, I, I have, you know, uh, You just like your daddy. You ain't gonna be shit. You just like your daddy. That's some fucked up shit to say to a little boy. It is. Because you picked a, that you picked that dude. And you telling your son he gonna be just like him? Your daddy ain't shit. You ain't gonna be shit. You just like your daddy. Energetic clearing. Rewrite your story. Live your truth. It's time to rewrite the story. It's time to get away from the bullshit and live rewrite the truth. energetic clearing rewrite your story live your truth that's in a challenge because first of all a lot of people ain't gonna like what i just said about that word they not stars align remembering home i just said a lot of folks ain't gonna remember like what i just said about that word but we don't remember we don't even know where it come from it's a lot of us that haven't studied nothing else but that one book they don't even study any other scripture outside of the one that the pastor teach on Sunday. No additional context. Again, how many times have you had somebody really ask that question? If Mary was the one that was pregnant by immaculate birth, immaculate, like had not known a man, no seed, no, I mean, no fertilizer. She got the egg, but he ain't fertilized nothing. Why is her story not told? Stars align, remembering home, soul family. It's time for us to come together. 
from a soul space. And remember that we are all equally valued. I can't do it out here without you, bruh, just like you can't do it out here without me. This is why we struggle, because we don't see equal value in each other. We don't even have a connection to our families. Like, you know, we've been spreading out. We don't have a connection to our lineage. We don't have a connection to our language. We don't have connection to our food. We don't have connection to anything that truly belongs to us. Everything is modeling after another group. Something that we've taken on as conformity and we live it through our identity like it's us. And it is not us. None of it is us. It don't belong to us. All encompassing love. Unconditional acceptance. I like that. Align with the purpose. Can we come into alignment through purpose? And surrender and submit to the purpose. Submit to the purpose. Your Akashic Records. We talked about that library being stored back there. All encompassing love. Unconditional acceptance. Can you accept me, my brother? In this day and age. Can you accept me? Flaws and all. The same way you want us to accept you. Flaws and all. They say, can you... Can you uh, date somebody that only makes X amount of dollars. It's not about how much money you make. It's about your character. Honestly. These women out here chasing money, that's not the real thing. She's insecure. Looking for something to secure her. That's chasing after a model that's never been us. Never been us. Whether I work at home or whether I work out, you know, in the house or out the house. It don't matter. My work is to be respected and to be honored. The same way your work is to respect, be respected and to be honored. We to, For us to come together in purpose, like how Mary and Joseph was brought together in purpose to rear the messenger, to bring the messenger up so that that messenger can have an impact on the world. That's the whole thing. And then we think about how the angel of the Lord spoke to both of them. Yeah. It wasn't like, oh, like... Adam and Eve where Eve was presented to Adam and he like, oh shit, that's my boo. We just gonna work it out and then they ended up on some struggle love shit because that's really what it was. Think about it. Outside influences coming in, that shit is the same thing. Gossip, somebody trying to get you to do some shit, you take it back to him, so and so. Neither one of them went to God. They didn't, they didn't go to the Father and be like, oh, what do we do with this? You told us this and somebody else said that, so what should we do? They didn't go to the Father. They hid, embarrassed. After they made their own fucking decision and did some bullshit and let some shit come in between them and now they hid. They didn't go to the father and ask what to do, even though the father walked with them intimately on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, like, I got an inside scoop, like, all oh, father always been right here, boom. I can always ask. They didn't do that. But what happened with Mary and Joseph? The angel of the Lord spoke to Mary. And then spoke to Joseph. So you think that God won't talk to both of y'all and bring y'all two into alignment with the purpose of the Most High God so y'all can actually carry out the work, the purpose? Yes, it will. The Most High God will talk to both of you. Will speak to you, will speak to him. And bring y'all together in purpose. And what do y'all do? Y'all submit to the purpose of the Most High God. Because Joseph could have been like, no, I'm not marrying no chick that's already pregnant. What is you talking about? And it ain't no such thing as no immaculate birth. No, she knew a man. Come on now. So however which way you believe, if you believe on that text like that for real, for real, for real, because you in the word, then guess what? You have to believe that the Most High God will talk to both of you and you will come together and purpose and do a work and you both submit onto the purpose that's given onto the both of you. You will come into alignment with the purpose it's for us to submit over vanity because if somebody look good, don't bring you shit but trouble. And that's what I saw with Adam and Eve. It didn't do shit but bring trouble. He woke up and saw Eve, really? And then what happened with the kids? Cain slew Abel. That's a bullshit family drama. This shit ain't nothing new. Come on, y'all. This your girl, Lati. I done kept y'all long enough. Going through this here text. We didn't know how we was going to get this out. And we really don't know how y'all going to receive it. 
Because the message is what the message is. And that's just that. Do I feel like it's a difference between us? Hell yeah, it is. I'm a woman, a whole woman. I got shit up in this motherfucker that you could never understand. Tell me that I fucking came from a man, from a rib. You ain't got no goddamn uterus just like I ain't got no prostate. How the fuck did I come from your rib? You can't make a uterus out of that shit. How you ain't, you know. Let's think about this stuff in a different way. Reject the bullshit and let's talk about some real shit. And maybe we could really get our shit back together so we could heal our families, heal our communities, raise these babies so we could raise ourselves up. Because honestly, truth be told, uh, like I said, bro, you, 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 you don't, you ain't got big house bread like that. You just don't. And it still take the both of us to do any fucking thing. It take two of us. It took two of us with multiple streams of income to do it. And we lost it over a fucked up mindset because you want to disrespect your other half. The person that's working ten toes down with you to make some shit happen. When and get on and leave your ass for it. Get down, girl. Go ahead. Get down. I got a need. I love y'all. I love y'all so much. I love you just like I love me. Seriously, I do. I love y'all because I love the source that made me, that made you. And I value you, my brother, just like I value myself. You are a reflection. You my other half. To balance out these two of pinnacles, we need both of us. You on one hand, I'm on the other. The sun and the moon. The planet don't do its thing without the both. Huh. What would happen if the moon disappeared? Come on now. What would happen if the sun disappeared? We ain't making no babies if I ain't got no seed and you ain't got no egg. And you damn sure need somewhere for that egg to grow. You need somebody to house it and I need you to protect me while I'm doing that work. We need each other. Sitting up here asking about who's greater, we equally valued. And just because we equal don't mean that we the same. We not supposed to be the same because we don't necessarily do the same shit. But what we do together is to dominate this bitch, is to subdue these tears, to replenish and to multiply. Can we re get some restoration and some regeneration on that? On some realness. To the next now. On Tears and We Tarot Show. Where you show enough, never know what you're going to get. I'll